guys, Girl About Library, and I want to make a video that's a little bit different today, and it's a video like I've never made before, but it's a series that I want to start. I've noticed in the books that I really love, like the books that I want to share and the reason that I made a channel like this, there's always quotes that just pull me in. So I thought it would be fun to start sharing some of those quotes with you guys, some of the moments from books that I loved and why, why those quotes spoke to me. And also maybe by sharing quotes from some of the books that I love, I can motivate you to read these books as well. I was motivated to do this in part because of a book that I read named Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. I recently finished this book, I loved it, and there were so many quotes in that book that just spoke to me. She is an amazing writer, and so I wanted to share some of them with you. Let's get into it. I have my laptop down here with all the quotes pulled up, so here we go. Quote number one, it's kind of tragic, I reflected, that we all spent our lives working but never really got good at our work or even finished it. The purpose instead was for me to stand on the rock that he had thrown into the rushing river, bend and claw another rock from the bottom, and then cast it down a bit further in hope it would be a useful next step for some person with whom providence might allow me to cross paths. Like, oh my goodness. Hope just does such an amazing job in Lab Girl portraying her life as a research scientist. If you're not familiar with the book, that's the premise of the book. It is a memoir by Hope where she discusses her life as a scientist, as a female scientist especially because she is unique in that. And much of the book is her discussion of the struggles that come from that, from being a scientist. And frequently in Lab Girl, to my delight as a reader, her descriptions of that life are so poetic, um, which is how I would describe this quote. I just adore how she describes like how futile the pursuit of science can feel, but also how noble it ultimately is as a career and as a passion. I love how she points out the providence involved in her work that she feels like it is just pure chance or some sort of divine intervention that she should meet someone who is also on that same path and that her discoveries could somehow help them, that that is ultimately what she is here for. So that she can share and develop someone else in this rushing river bend of rocks that is science. Like, oh my gosh, the writing in this book, I just, oh, it's so good. Quote number two, people are like plants. They grow towards the light. I chose science because science gave me what I needed a home as defined in the most literal sense, a safe place to be. Again, Hope is just totally killing it with like the poetic descriptions of life in the form of plant similes. I just, throughout the entire book, there is this amazing way that she pulls in her study of botany into her understanding of humans and how we interact with each other. And I could relate to this quote because I was a science major my first two semesters of college, which is shocking to me even, um, but I switched from science to English pretty quickly. Before that though, I did spend a lot of time in labs and I can definitely see how that kind of like seemingly clean, like cold environment could feel like a home. And you can totally understand that for Hope by the end of the book, it is so obvious that labs are her home. I think that this book could be really powerful for someone who maybe is starting out in science or is exploring that as like a possible career choice because she makes it just so... not that she romanticizes it because I, I think that she genuinely feels this way about her lab but it just makes it seem so homey and so such a camaraderie with her lab mate Bill and I just... I love this book. Oh this is like Oh, this is so good, you guys. All right, quote number three. Working in a hospital teaches you that there are only two kinds of people in the world, the sick and the not sick. If you are not sick, shut up and help. 25 years later, I still cannot reject this as an inaccurate worldview. This quote is everything to me. I love, I mean, this is part of like one of my favorite chapters of this book. I love this whole book. But this chapter in particular where Hope talks about her time working as a pharmacy tech before she became a lab and research scientist 
was one of my favorite chapters in the entire book. It was absolutely fascinating. Because before she worked as a research scientist, Hope actually helped mix uh, medicines in a hospital. Um, that's, I guess, that's how, I don't know if that's still how they do it. Please let me know below if you know. Um, but that's what she did. She she worked in the pharmacy for the hospital. And I just, uh, I love this worldview. I think that this is an incredibly valuable worldview to have. One, it asks you to prioritize people who are less fortunate than you, who for chance or luck or in, even in the case of poor choices, this person is sick and they need your help. And if you're not sick, you need to help them. And it also acknowledges like your temporary luck in the moment to not be a sick person, that this could just as easily be you and you're on one side of the table, but the table might turn. And I can completely understand why after all of that time working in the, in the hospital, she felt that way. I volunteered in a hospital when I was in high school and I, I do think that that kind of exposed me to a lot of, of sadness and hurt um, to see people like that, but it is also incredibly valuable to be aware of that at all times, that you are lucky every day to be healthy. And reading Lab Girl, it was so inspiring and just interesting to hear Hope talk about her time in the hospital working and how compassionate and empathetic she felt for these people who she was mixing medicine for, even though she never saw most of them. So quote number four is also a hospital quote, but one that I connected to, like, to the point that I was clapping while I was reading this. Um, and that is, once everything is turned on, I am surrounded by their friendly electronic faces on all sides and each continuously repeats to me its own soothing story, as if they all understand that there is no upper limit to the amount of reassurance that I will require during my ordeal. In this quote, Hope is talking about her experience giving birth to her son in the hospital, and everything about this quote spoke to me. I just really related to her feeling of reassurance from something as simple as the keeping of a machine in that moment, like you just, <sighs> I spent nearly two weeks in the hospital giving birth to my son because I had preeclampsia and I had that before and after um, and I heard a lot of beeping. <laughs> You're just terrified of something going wrong and there is no upper limit to the amount of reassurance that you will need in that moment like Hope says. It is terrifying. Um, I imagine you know, most hospital stays are. It's terrifying, but you're also really soothed by seemingly unsoothing things like, like beeping. Okay, quote number five, I had to include a quote that is plant-based because this entire book has tons of really interesting facts about plants, so it seemed kind of silly to not include one, and this is my favorite. Leaves make sugar. Plants are the only things in the universe that can make sugar out of non-living organic matter. All of the sugar that you have ever eaten was first made within a leaf. Without a constant supply of glucose to your brain, you will die. Period. It's inescapable. At this very moment, within the synapses of your brain, leaves are fueling thoughts of leaves. I have lots of favorite things about this book, but one of them is that although this book has a lot of science in it, it never felt overdone. I never felt like I was being lectured to or that I was reading a textbook. The science related facts are so well sprinkled throughout the book and most of the time they're not just there for the science, they're there also to illuminate something about human nature or about her relationship to, to her science. So. There are five quotes that I love from the book Lab Girl by Hope Jaren. They were actually pretty tough for me to choose as there were tons of moments during this book that I want to share with others. I hope that by sharing these quotes, you learned a little bit about Lab Girl, about Hope Jaren, and also about me. If you have read Lab Girl, please comment down below. I would love to hear about some of your favorite moments from the book. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more bookish content. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.